Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're going to be taking a look at luminosity masking, when you should use it, and what you would really be using it for. So let's go and get editing on this photo. Now, the photo in front of you, I have already added um, all of my develop settings that I think I want to add to this image, right? I chose my camera profile, and then I used AI Auto and made a few manual adjustments there. No big deal. Now, luminosity masking is super easy inside of On One. What I'm gonna do is add a tone enhancer. Now, you're gonna have to bear with me for a minute because uh, I'm gonna make this photo look pretty trash, all right? I'm gonna pull down on the exposure and I'm even gonna pull down on the blacks there. I'll probably compress it a little bit uh, and, and I'll even crank up the details and the clarity. All right, so as is, this photo does not look very good. But as soon as I come to my mask and I click this button that says Lumen, it restores a lot of the information back to the image. And let's just take a look at the mask. So what it's doing is it is selecting the image or parts of the image based off of the brightness values. So the brightest areas of the image are going to be white and the darkest areas of the image are going to be black. Now, when you're making a mask and you want to select the brightest areas or the darkest areas, you've probably already seen me do this in other videos. Um, well, the luminosity mask makes it easier for you to find those darker and brighter areas. Now, if I only wanted to apply this adjustment to the darker areas, what I would do is hit invert. And now it is selecting the darker areas in my image. And you you have a little bit of control over how well it selects those areas. So I can pull up here and the more black in this particular version, because I inverted the mask, the more black uh, that you see it is pulling that away from the brightest areas of the image uh, because that's what I am no longer selecting, right? Because I inverted the mask. So it is now only selecting the darker areas of the image. And I'll show you what that looks like by hitting O. Now you can see that just the darker areas of the image got dark. Now, that doesn't make sense unless that's what you're going for if you know you're trying to get that type of vibe uh, but if i were to invert this now the brighter areas of the image get dark and the uh not the darker areas of the image stay the same makes it look really really strange um so how do you use this practically well once you've made your adjustment i'm just going to reset that by double clicking on levels once you've made your adjustment, uh, there's a few different ways that you can go about this. You have to know what it is that you want to select. All right. Uh, if you only want to select dark areas after you've made your adjustment, then then you can just pull down on this uh, the window. And what what it's doing is it is eliminating all of the brightest colors or brightest values, not colors. There's no color involved with this. The brightest values. So all these that are pure black, those are those are so bright um, that it falls outside of this window of opportunity, so to speak, for the mass to work. Now, the further you pull it, the more you're honing in on just the dark information or the, the darkest information in the image. And that could be what you want to do, right? If you just want to enhance some contrast uh, or darken up the darkest portions of your image, this could be uh, the way that you do it and you add in a little detail. On the flip side, you can invert that and focus on just the brighter areas. So maybe you have some really, really bright areas and you want to only pull down on the bright areas. Now, mind you, you can still paint on this mask, right? Uh, the luminosity mask just makes it easier for you to target based off of the brightness values of your image. And it doesn't matter what 
effect you're using, the luminosity mask uh, can be applied. So that was with a tone enhancer. Let's take a look at using a split tone filter. So we'll click on split tone. And I am going to apply the luminosity mask right off the bat. And I am going to pull it away from the shadows. So I am only applying this split tone to the brightest areas of my image, which means my highlights are going to get more of this uh, adjustment. If I hit O, you can see that in these darker areas, I'm not targeting those as much. But where there's gray, that means that there's going to be some information uh, put in from the split tone. Now, this is a little counterproductive uh, for you know the purpose of using a luminosity mask on a split tone. But if you really just want to target your, your highlight areas and maybe touch a little bit of the shadows, we'll make the shadows red so that way you can really see what it may be affecting. And we'll crank up the amount on the shadows. You see how this gives a more natural look to your split tone? Uh, if you didn't have the luminosity mask, this would not look the same, right? So this is why luminosity masking is so cool. You have complete control over how your uh, effects, whatever it is that you're adjusting, you have complete control over how that blends. As you can see, if I want it to be more towards uh, targeting the mask for um, the brightest of the brights and really making the, the transition between the darks and the brights more harsh, as you can see, it happens, right? That's what this mid-tone is. So at what point does the darkest portion of your image transition to the middle grays and then from the middle grays to the whites. Now, I know that that may sound a little confusing, but the more you play around with this, the better you will get at it. Now, one of my recommendations when using a luminosity mask is pay attention to if the feather can be value added to your editing. If you click on uh, the feather and you drag that up, you see how it's blurring my mask a little bit. Uh, to me, it helps with applying an effect a little bit more natural. Like when there is, and it doesn't work so well with this image, uh, other than there's like these harsh colors that are on this pole and you can see it on the anchor. But as soon as I hit the feather, it starts to blend that a little bit more natural. So as I make my adjustments, uh, we'll go with like a blue and we'll crank up the amount. Not that that looks any better, but you can, you can kind of see what's happening, uh, more. Um, and then if we flip that, that may be cool. You got all kinds of options available to you here. And I just want to show how you can use a luminosity mask to really get a detailed selection. Now, if you do not like, uh, maybe you don't want the effect on the rocks, right? So I'm going to make my brush really large and I'm on paint out. And all I'm gonna do is click over this brush or over this rock using my brush. And now I no longer have the effect there because I just got rid of it. Or maybe you want the effect to go all over this anchor because that's just the way that you want to edit. You can click and drag all the way over the anchor. You're still getting the selection around everything else and you can use even the perfect brush. So if I hit Command R, I can use my perfect brush and look, I'm staying within the lines of the anchor by itself and it's not going out like it did on the left side of the anchor there. I'm just selecting the anchor and uh, you know that's gonna take its own time and that's all based off of the tones that are in the anchor. 
but you can get some really natural uh, lighting situations using a luminosity mask. I think that's where uh, it really shines, but there's a lot of applications for using a luminosity mask. So experiment with it. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.